Leo the Thirteenth. It was in a gloomy atmosphere that the first conclave since the fall of Rome gathered, but that conclave produced a pope who would lift up the hearts of Catholics, and indeed of all men of good will throughout the world, the great Leo the Thirteenth. Giacchino Pisci was born at Carpianetto on March 2nd, 1810. After education at the Jesuit College in Viterbo, the Roman College, and the College for Nobles, Pisci hesitated about becoming a priest. But in 1837, he made his decision and plunged wholeheartedly into the priestly life. In 1838, Gregory the Sixteenth sent Pici to rule Benevento as a legate. He gave the district a taste of good government by running down the bandits who infested the area. Moved to Perugia in 1841, Pici started a bank for the poor and introduced other reforms. In 1843, he went as nuncio to Belgium and when recalled in 1845, he was made bishop of Perugia. Pius IX made him a cardinal in 1853. Pici ruled his diocese in such a manner as to foreshadow his career as pope. He insisted on religious instruction and on the study of Aquinas. He spoke out against the social evils of the day. When the Piedmontese took Perugia from the Pope in 1860, anti-clerical politicians made life miserable for Catholics. Pucci stood up to them, registering 18 protests. Yet, such was his diplomacy that despite his manly defense of church rights, he got along with the government. In 1877, Pius IX called him to Rome and made him Camerolengo. After Pius died, Pieci succeeded him as Leo the Thirteenth. Leo found the church under fire in many countries, and, except for Italy, his policy was one of conciliation. He made the road to Canossa easy for Bismarck, who called off his anti-Catholic campaign. He tried to get French Catholics to come down from a royalist dream world to Republican reality. He soothed the English by frowning on the vigorous methods of Irish agrarian reformers. He even won a few concessions for the Tsar's oppressed Catholic subjects. When, in 1885, Germany and Spain accepted Leo's arbitration in a dispute over the Caroline Islands, it was a token of the Pope's new prestige. It was as a leader in ideas that Leo is truly great. He saw the need for emphasizing the value of St. Thomas, and he recalled Catholic thinkers to the study of Aquinas. He encouraged biblical studies, and while rightly cautious, about certain critical tendencies of the age, he left the way open to continue improvement. To historians, Leo was a true friend. He opened the Vatican archives to research, and he urged scholars to tell the truth and tell it whole. Above all, by his encyclical Rerum Novarum, Leo brought Christ into the factories and slums. As Christ once scourged the buyers and sellers in the temple, so now did his vicar flail those who defiled God's human temples by cruel economic and social measures. Critical of both extreme socialist and capitalist solutions to the day's problems, Leo laid down Christian norms to guide men to a better social system. Published in 1891, Rerum Novarum was hailed by Catholics and non-Catholics alike. Though Leo XIII died on July 20, 1903, his influence lives on. Leo 
the thirteenth, two hundred and fifty-fourth Pope. Christ our King, thy kingdom come.